Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, this video is uh, all about getting 90 frames per second on the Pimax Crystalline IL-2 using OpenXR. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Before I fire up the Pimax client, which is where we're at now in the, the base station. Well, you don't need a base station. The base station is the headset because it uses inside-out tracking. But before we get to that, let's look at the programs that I use to get into OpenXR. This program is called Open Composite. And I've got it in a file on my desktop in a folder called Sim Stuff. So I just have to go over here, go to Open Composite, and then uh, Open Composite rather than Open OVR, and open it, go to the executable. There it is. It's basically a switch that enables um, OpenXR or switches it back to Steam VR. Now there's another program I'll use, which is called the Pimax Client, uh, the Pimax Runtime for XR, and it's another switch program. It just tells the computer that we're going to run the Pimax XR Runtime. And uh, there's one more program, Open XR Toolkit. Now I've got all of these just as uh, you know, installed on my computer with a with a, an icon on the on the screen. So I just click on the icon, enable the program, bang! Now I'm ready to go to Pi Tools and start the game. That's not hard. Once you understand that all you're doing is starting a couple of small programs and letting them run in the background, then you're ready to go. We'll go into Pimax uh, Crystal's client. And we're on device settings here. I'll go to device. If I wanted to, I could run it 120 hertz. I just tried this before, before making this video. I tried to see if I could get more than 90 frames per second by going to a 20, 120 hertz. I did, but I still I had to really reduce the, um, the graphics in order to get to, to 90 frames per second. Plus, I just realized I had two programs running in the background. So... I've shut them off. I, I never said I was the smartest guy in VR. Certainly not the most expert. But anyway, now we're running on basically a, a clean platform with nothing running in the background other than the programs I need for OpenXR. And I've got the Pimax uh, client and the headset set for 90 hertz. We'll go to games. IL2 render rate is 1. Now, this becomes irrelevant because in OpenXR, I'm going to change that. The Pimax setting tool allows me to go up and down in 25% increments. Whereas in OpenXR, I don't have to jump from 100 all the way down to 75 if I don't want to, or to 50. I can go to 60% or 65% or 75% or 80 or whatever. And I think that's a great advantage when you're trying to, uh, to tune a sim. But I should also say that if you don't want to do any of this stuff, you don't want to run an OpenXR, you just want to play the game, out of the box, firing up the Pimax Crystal and running uh, IL2 in Steam with the same settings I used on my 8KX, I got 40, 45 frames per second consistently. And that's, that's always been what I've been satisfied with. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just see now. What else can I show you? Once we're in the game, let me go to picture, let me go to desktop, Pimax files. Now let's see if I can, here's a picture. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see this. I can try and make it a little bit bigger. Here we are. This is the OpenXR toolkit, and this is the main page in performance. You can set it up to give you a frame per second counter. You can set a target frame rate. I didn't realize I'd done that. You can use upscaling and sharpening, and both those things work pretty well. And turbo mode, I find, works really well. And then if we zoom over to here, system, this is where you'll find uh, the other programs we want to use. So let's, let's go to that. Uh, I think it should be, is this it here? Let's see. Yep, this is it. So let's make this a little bigger. Hopefully you can read it. So we're under system, we go to override resolution, click on yes, and now I've got it set down to what's very close 
to the Pimax uh, Crystal's native resolution for each eye, which is about 2880 by 2880, if I recall correctly. This is 2881 by 3460. That's close enough for my work. The kind of rough carpentry I do, that'll do. All right, now let's start the game. That's how we set it up, and uh, I can show you the settings I'm using in the game once we're in it. Because I'm using quite a few, I'm, I'm using basically the ultra settings with a few minor changes. Here we are. Okay, let's put the headset on. When I say let's, I mean I'll put the headset on. Okay. Put it on, center the view. Okay, we got 90 frames per second in here. That doesn't mean anything. Let's go to, let's just, I just want to show you the settings I'm using in the game. I've got it set to ultra, but there are some exceptions. This screen resolution doesn't really matter. I've got uh, the headset, VR headset enabled. I don't have HDR on. I had a viewer ask me about that today. I'm not exactly sure what it does. I've never had it on, but I, I'm going to leave it off for now. The only changes I've made is uh, I've got distant land scale set up times two, which adds a little bit to the uh, processor load and the GPU load, but I think the game looks better. Canopy reflections are normal. Horizon draw distance. Well, this I've set this at 130 kilometers. I could set it to 150, but 130 is fine. And uh, it, it gives me a nice view. It makes me feel like I'm... I'm not playing in fog because if you set the horizon closer, of course you'll get a higher frame rate because your your machine isn't working as hard to cover all that territory. But uh, when I set it out at 130, everything looks nice and crisp. Landscape filter is on sharp. Terrain roughness is off because I have no idea what that means. I always turn clouds to low and I have anti-aliasing off. If I put it on to two, I don't really see a difference, but some people do. If you see, when you, when you use these settings, if you choose to, on your own crystal, and you see, uh, you know, anti-aliasing effects like shimmering or jagged lines, and some people are very sensitive to this, then you just turn anti-aliasing on to about two, and it doesn't degrade the frame rate very much, and it may very well get rid of the, the things that are bothering you. Okay, so let's, let's go to the game. I just want to fly a quick mission, just a quick flight to see what we get for frames per second. And uh, we'll fly without opposition because I don't want to waste time dogfighting here. I just want to show you what it looks like. I can, I can make other videos that show you how inept I am as a dogfighter if you like, but I don't think it's necessary. All right, start them up. All right, 90, 91 frames per second right now. Will it last? Well, I don't know, we'll find out. I just gotta find the pause key here. And there we go. <laughs> I wish I had a pass-through mode so I could see my keyboard. Or I wish there was a virtual representation of my keyboard. I don't know how they could do that, but uh, a pass-through mode would be nice. If I could hit a button and have a pass-through mode to let me see my, my, my keyboard, that would be good. One of the things I like about DCS and uh, Flight Sim 2020 is you can use your mouse in the game. That makes a big difference. So we're diving for the ground here. I'm getting close to the ground and see what we have for frames per second over busier, busier areas. Wow, the reflections in the water and the light on the water looks great. Trees look good. Now well, we're going to fly down the avenue here. Try not to hit any trees. I don't want the video to be that short. Wow, those buildings look great. We're flying into the sun, so I'm going to do a circle here over the city. Okay, that looks great. I mean, 
I'm getting 84, 82 frames per second over extremely busy territory, and I have most of my settings in the game on ultra. As soon as we leave the city, the frame rate goes back to 87. If I look up at the sky and fly, looking in less busy areas, I get 88 to 91 frames per second. I don't think I really need to lower the resolution any more than this. I am going to have to hit the brighten button somehow and, and make it a little bit brighter, I think. Or maybe that's just because I'm flying in shadow on a cloud or a cloud. Yeah, no, this looks pretty good. I really love the way these sims look. ECS IL2, the cockpits are beautiful. I think for my own purposes, I might dial the resolution up a little bit more, maybe to 3500 by 4000 or whatever, and, and settle for 80, 85 frames per second. But I have to admit, this cockpit looks good. The colors still pop. Everything, everything looks really good. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's that's how I get to 90 frames per second in IL2. 88, 89 right now. Um, and I can't take credit for it because, you know, <laughs> I'm not the sharpest tool in the VR shed. So I never hate to, I never hesitate to ask for help. And several of my viewers uh, came in and, and helped me out with suggestions that led me in the right direction. And then I went into the uh, beta test Discord and asked some of the other beta testers, and Matt, who uh, wrote the Open XR toolkit, and they they all said the same thing: the the automatic resolution that Steam especially sets the Pimax Crystal to is way too high. It's like double the resolution per eye. You don't need that much resolution. So when you set it down, that gives you headroom. You can get a good frame per second, and still, if you if you feel you need to, you can use anti-aliasing, MSAA, get rid of whatever um, visual artifacts you don't like, and still get 75, 80 frames per second. You know, <laughs> that's pretty good. I, I know another reviewer posted a video with all the problems that that person had had running games and even suggested that if you if you had a 3080 or a 3090 you might as well not bother buying the Pimax crystal. Okay well I've got an older processor I've got a 3090 it's not a 3090 Ti it's not anything fancy you can't even overclock it and I'm getting 85 to 91 frames per second. So much for that theory. So the bottom line is, if you want to run on a 3080 or a 3090 with a Pimax Crystal, you certainly can. Will you have a better experience with a 4090? Well, maybe. Or a 4080? Yeah, probably. But, you know, if you're like me and you're not made out of money, maybe buy the headset first and then save up for the next generation after the 4090. The Crystal will still be a good headset a year from now. And the 5090 will be out, and who knows what that will bring. You can always upgrade the, uh, the GPU later. And in the meantime, you can enjoy the crystal with a 3080 or a 3090 very well indeed. Listen, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate your patience with my horrible rambling narration. Um, you know, if Finn Does Sims was a wristwatch, it wouldn't go tick tock tick tock. It would go talk 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 talk. Anyway, thank you so much again for stopping by, and I hope you'll consider hitting the like button and maybe even subscribing. Have a great day. Talk soon.